And that's what the schools unfortunately told me. Hey, you just be a great clinician. You've got your degree. You're going to be successful. But that wasn't necessarily the case. Welcome to AMC. I'm Dr. Greg Miller. Have you ever wondered if you are missing out on referral protocols in your practice? Today, Dr. Jeremy Brubaker is going to share about internal referral protocols, and you won't want to miss the section about how to build a referral culture in your practice. Let's get started. Hello, Dr. Brubaker here with you again. In this series, where we're talking about referrals, and specifically, we wanted to talk today about referral protocols. And when I say referral protocols, I'm not even sure that's the right terminology. And uh, so let's, let's shift that terminology because I've rarely seen a specific procedure or protocol be the end all to be all about patients referring other patients to our office. So let's back that up for a second and really unpack what is a referral protocol. To me, it's a, it's a referral culture. If our goal was to develop a self-sustaining, referral base, low stress type of practice, then we've got to think about what kind of culture does it take to create that? So when, I, when we're thinking about this, I wanted to bring three points to you. How do we develop that referral culture, which means everything that we do in that office really points to helping more people, changing more lives. And to me, that's what a referral is. Referral to me is a cheap word. It's kind of a sales term. I really don't like it that much. Don't have a better one for it. Uh, but let's, let's talk about how do we change more lives. Uh, and, and three points I wanted to hit with you today and how we develop that culture is we start with some expectations. We have a culture of expectations that as we change lives, that our patients are going to be on mission and share that. All right, so expectations one, and we'll swing back around to these just briefly um, today on each one of these points. The second one is engagement. We want to engage with our patients. And I guess what I mean by that is take a genuine interest in our patients. Again, all of us practice in different ways, uh, and some are high volume, some are medium volume, some are low volume, some are PI type practices, some are rehab based, some are from condition specific. So there's there's a gamut of different you know practice uh, types out there that, that we all engage with, but we can all engage I think better with our patients. Meaning we really are interested in the patient. These aren't just numbers on a sheet. These aren't just you know, collections on a, on a tablature, it is a person's life that we're speaking into and changing. So the more we can engage with that patient, um, the more we're going to bend towards the culture of referrals. And the last point when we're thinking about a culture of referrals is just enthusiasm, I mean, general enthusiasm. And think back, there was a reason that each and every one of us, you know, went through the, uh, what I want to say, the challenges, the sacrifice, the, you know, all the hurdles we all had to jump through to get to be where we're at, getting through chiropractic school. So put yourself in that, in that, on that graduation stage for just a second. There was a level of enthusiasm of what we're going to do, what we're going to accomplish. We're going to change the world mentality. At least that was mine. Maybe it was yours. So I want you to think back to that moment. There was some genuine enthusiasm about starting practice. So let's fast forward to wherever you're at now. You may be at that point now. You may be 30 years into practice uh, where that enthusiasm tends to wane over time if you allow it. So let's go back. So if we're going to have expectations of referrals, we're going to engage with our patients on a higher level, and we're going to genuinely bring authentic enthusiasm to each and every visit each and every day, well, that's a design. That's not going to be an accident. We're not just going to show up and necessarily execute every one of those every day. It's got to start with a very intentional process every single day to envision and, and really encapsulate that culture. So hopefully you're following with the, and again, I haven't talked a lick about necessarily one specific protocol yet, but I'll, I'll mention a few before we get through. But let's go unpack expectations for a moment. So if we expect a referral culture, what do we need to do? So with an expectation, if there's no action you know, joined with that, well, then it's going to be empty. There's not going to be, that's like anything in life. We can want to do, we can wish for a lot of things, but until you engage and put productive activity with it, 
all that is is really simply a wish. I wish we had referrals. I wish we had this culture. But let's get down to the net and grit. It takes intentional, consistent, everyday activity to create that in your office. Uh, so hopefully you're tracking with me. And that's a big one. If I don't expect it, you know, it's typically not going to happen. If I don't put action with it, it's typically not going to happen. And, and answer this for yourself. Do patients refer to your office simply because you get great results? Now, there's a few, sure, but on the whole, that's not how this works, right? You've experienced, I've experienced it. If that was the case, you know, we just stop the camera right now and say, let's, just, let's teach technique, right? Go get great results. And that's what the schools unfortunately told me, hey, you just be a great clinician. You've got your degree. You're going to be successful. Well, that wasn't necessarily the case, at least in my experience and probably in yours as well. There's a few reasons why we can expect people to refer. And here's some, here's some quick ones, right? Number one, why do they refer? Because they like you, right? They have a good experience in your office. They like your staff. You know, it's very hard for me to refer to any business if I don't like them. How about you, right? So think about that when you're looking at your office. You want a, want a referral protocol? Let's make sure our patients like us. And I know that maybe sounds silly to say, uh, but that's step one. Step two, they gotta know you understand. That means we need to listen. It's just not all me talking as the doctor at them. They've got to know deep down in their innate that we understand where they're at, what they're going through, and that, that we have an answer for them, right? So those are two components. The last one is they really need to feel special, right? Why do you refer to a different business uh, that you love? Well, you like it, you've got great service, you get great results, right? Those are part of it, uh, but you also feel special. You're made to feel special, you're made to feel important. So as we line up those expectations, there's a few points, hey, that you can take me and go, well, we can do that. We can make people feel special. We can definitely listen more and understand them, and we can work our best so they like us uh, when they come into the office. So the second one, the engagement part of these referrals or the referral culture, is really, 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 and you, and you can't fake this, you need to take a genuine interest in your patients. You need to know their patients. I'm not saying you're gonna be friends with your patients, you're gonna be the friendliest doctor. However, you need to know your patients. You need to celebrate the wins, right? You need to know their family, right? And again, I'm not advocating real you know, extensive long office visits here, but it's gotta be an intentional part of what we do every day um, to really, and again, I'll flash back to an oldie but a goodie, you know, how to win friends and influence people from Dale Carnegie. Most of us have read that, we understand the principles. The question is, do we implement those every day? And that's engaging with your patients. Engagement is a big one. And last in our referral culture, well, it's probably not the last, but last one we're gonna talk about today is the enthusiasm level, right? Do you really love your patients? Do you really love practice? Do you really love chiropractic? At one point we did, or we wouldn't have gone through all those hurdles that we jumped through to get to be a chiropractor. So I want, to, I want you to go back and think about that. And one thing that motivates me, you know, again, there's lots of things that I can focus on that, that kind of erodes at my love for patients and chiropractic and the practice. Some of the stuff that we don't like to do or deal with or the confrontations or, or whatever that can erode that enthusiasm if you allow it. But flip it over and just, you know, take some of your patients. Look at the lives that are changed. What you save them from is always one of the biggest motivators when I'm thinking about enthusiasm is where would they be in 5, 10, 15 years if they hadn't got the care with us? If we haven't shared the principles of health with them in our office, where would they be? That's highly motivated. So it's easy for me to get enthusiastic, man. Um, and I'm, again, to love your patients, to love your practice, to love chiropractic, that's hard to fake and people will feel it. If you bring that every day, it's like Isaac Newton, he said, for every action there's an opposite and equal reaction. So if you come to the office loving patients, chiropractic, your practice, your patients will mirror that, right? And if you come as a bummer and this is uh, just another grind of a day, and unfortunately sometimes it gets like that we get kind of that burned out feeling and we don't bring it, well, oftentimes those patients are going to mirror that level of enthusiasm. And what does this have to do with referrals? 
Well, it becomes very difficult for a patient to get excited and refer somebody new to your office if they're not getting that from you. So it's kind of a two-way street. We bring it to the table, they're enthusiastic about the care, they feel special, they feel engaged with, um, we have the expectations, and we simply ask them to share. And now we've got referral protocols built in with principles all throughout our day. So we could scratch, I mean, we're just really scratching the surface. We could talk all day on this, one of my favorite subjects, favorite topics. Uh, we're going to unpack this in one of our future events coming up as well in, in, in a bigger way. But I wanted to just share with you some principles. Hopefully some, most of these are familiar. And now let's take an expectation, line it up with an action, engage with our patients with some enthusiasm, and lo and behold, you'll see that level of referrals and more lives to change start going up and up and up. So hopefully this was helpful, some good reminders. If this is new to you, fantastic. Engage with us. We bake these type of principles into every day in our office, every day in the AMC systems um, that have been developed and refined over the years. It's baked in, it's part of the process. Um, and it takes us showing up, reminding what we do every day, remembering the lives that get changed, and there's no problem having expectations, being enthusiastic, and engaging with our patients. Hope this is a blessing. Take, run with it, and be blessed. Doc, we've got a live Zoom call on August 12th at 1 p.m. Eastern with more detail on referrals in your practice. Register at amcfamily.com slash calendar. AMC is here to help your practice become respected, effective, and valued.